Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. Today let's have a look at the timing system. Volvo timing system is simplicity itself. Only two gears and nothing to adjust. Very easy and very reliable. The original equipment timing gears were supplied to Volvo by Swag of West Germany. Fiber gear was used in almost all model series. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember the poor quality control that the East Germans had compared to West Germany. Therefore, it seems to me that our Volvo is very lucky that the gears for its engine were made in West Germany. Today, I'm going to show you how I will replace the gears in the B20 engine. If this is interesting to you, then keep watching! The fiber gears usually were gradually making the car sound like a dizzy. Uneven at idle. Truck advance is also jumping all over the place. Shows that the timing gear is obviously warm. It'll make the engine knock. The timing gear itself is warm, so the ignition timing is bouncing, especially at idle. Usually they get noisy and only fails many hundreds, if not thousands of miles later. Yes, car sound like a serious diesel Land Rover. Catastrophic failure will soon follow. When it occurs, engine cannot run until timing gears is replaced. Verify suspected timing gear by manually turning crampuli back and forth. You can see that there is uh, some clearance between the gears. Radiator should definitely be removed to gain good walking access. Unscrew the lower horse. Keep in mind that the antifreeze is deadly dangerous for the cats. Make sure there are no cats around. Radiator is attached with two bolts. From this side it is not very convenient to unscrew the bolt. And now I unscrew the upper data hose. It is very important to not to damage the radiator. Loosen the alternator bolts. Now unscrew the fan bolts. And now I can remove the pulley and fan belt. Now I need to unscrew that big crankshaft bolt. This is the way I do it. This doesn't necessarily mean this is the right way or the only way. Make sure that the engine at the top dead center. This is very important for removing and installing gears. By the look that metric bolt and rubber seal, I can say that the engine is not very old. 
To make it convenient to replace gears, I need to remove the radiator grill. And screw the screws securing the decorative radiator grill. Below there are metal latches, from which I can remove the radiator grill if I pull it up. Disconnect the wires. Now we got convenient walking access. Clean the timing case. We've cap cleaner type solvent on a rack multiple times. The timing case cover is now clean. Now we don't worry about dirt that can get inside. And unscrew all the cover bolts. Alternating from side to side. The bolts must be unscrewed alternately so that the surface of the cover is not damaged. And now, dear friends, we have come to the most interesting moment in our video. We will see the timing gears. The same gears were installed at the factory, but it seems to me that they have already been changed. Let's not forget that the engine is almost 50 years old. The play between the gears is terrible. We see that there is too much clearance between the teeth of the gears, which is no surprise with this kind of mileage. We are on the right way, and we see that it's time to change the timing gears. Trick to get a successful repair without leaks is to clean gasket area well of oil film with cap cleaner type solvent on a rack multiple times, obviously minimizing gasket remnants and solvent in crankcase. The covers for the fail seal and the rubber seal are different. This is the timing case for the rubber oil seal. A rubber seal can always be bought, but felt oil seals are not always on sale. From this point of view, of course, a rubber seal is better. But I must say that for the B18 engine I used a felt seal and there are no problems with it. It's time to take out the gears. Loosen the nut carefully. I don't remember where is the set of big inch sockets. So I use 36 mm socket. Definitely need puller, no question. This special tool can be used for removing the original fiber gear from the camshaft Volvo engine B16, B18 and of course B20 engine. Not forget that the timing marks must be in correct position. The marks on the camshaft and crankshaft gears must be opposite when piston number 1 at the top dead center. For more convenience, I use the metal ball, but I need to be very careful so that it doesn't not roll away. This is original fiber gear from Bosch. We see that the bronze plate is very worn out. Also, the bronze thrust plate broke in two places. Remove the crankshaft gear also by using special puller for it. The original crankshaft gear has two special holes with a 5 cut 16 UNC thread for the puller. I really like these metal bolts and I use them very often. Well, dear friends, we have removed the gears. I need to remove the bronze thrust plate to replace it and remove the oil jet to clean it. To unscrew the oil jet I use socket adapters. Oil jet spray had a square about half an inch size. I need to be very careful, this bronze oil jet has a tapered inch thread. When cleaning the jet it is important not to damage this small hole from which oil is sprayed. 
Only kerosene or compressed air can be used to clean the oil jet. The bronze plate is broken and must be replaced. Bronze is a very soft metal and now only steel thrust plates are sold. If the plate is not broken, it can be simply installed with the inside out. But if you take this way, the amount of wear on the thrust plate is again unpredictable. I removed the spacering to measure the difference in the thickness between the bronze plate and this spacering. The clean bronze jet must be reinstalled. When tightening it, always remember that it is a bronze part with a tapered thread. The spray of oil should be directed between the two gears. We need new parts for repairs. It's good if the gear set is in stock and waiting. This is set of original gears made in West Germany. There are two types of oil seals, rubber and felt for older models. This kit also includes a bronze plate and two screws with a red thread lock. This is the original fiber gear from Bosch. Two securing bolts. Parts are packed in special paper. Two different gaskets for different covers. For six-cylinder engine and four-cylinder engine. Of course, all these parts are made in West Germany. Here I smear in this place with fresh engine oil. Put the touching bolts through the new thrust plate original spacering. Now it's time to install. The bolts start to screw in, so the thrust plate doesn't slip back out of place. It is very important that tighten the bolts evenly. With bronze plate we need to be very careful, it can be easily broken. Continue tightening the two bolts alternating from side to side. Do not forget that the thread is already with anti-loosening compound. Do not over-tighten the bolts. I think 10 newton meters is enough. Not forget about Woodruff K. Now the most interesting moment. We will install the timing gears. The timing mark on the crankshaft gear opposite the camshaft. Press it in on gently, using a special tool. Make sure the gear is pressed in the correct position. The crankshaft of this B20 engine in the metric system and of course the fret size of the central bolt is 14 mm. But I must say that the crankshaft gear is the same for the crankshaft with metric system and for the crankshaft with the inch system. Therefore, the pressing tool is different for the metric and imperial crankshaft sizes. Of course, only the central part of the thread differs. I find this tool very handy because you don't need to head up the gear when installing it. We finish installing the crankshaft gear and move on to installing the camshaft gear. I decided to coat the end of camshaft with fresh oil. The fiber gear itself before installing I coat in the engine oil for a short time. Screw the central part of the tool onto the camshaft thread. The gear will run just after starting the engine. It needs oil after starting engine and not only when it's spraying with oil from the jet. Make sure that the timing marks in the correct position. Make sure that keyhole is in the line with the Woodrow key. Completely install our special tool. We can start pressing the gear. Never use a hammer for this. It is a fiber one that can easily be damaged. Never push the gear when installing. Otherwise, the camshaft will fly out from the rear of the engine. Volvo recommends a tightening force of 13-15 kilograms. 
It seems to me that such a strong tightening can damage the threads. I think 80 newton meters and a thread lock will be enough. Therefore, for additional security, lock tie should be used. Trick with the parking brake is not work. We need special fixation tool. I use tightening force of 80 newton meters. So, 80 newton meters with anti-loosening compound. If the hub is worn, you can simply install the inner side out. I washed the screws. I need to clean and degrease the gasket thoroughly. As you can see, these bolts are different. The cover will not spoil the seat because it is absolutely clean. This is four cylinder engine gasket. Put the attaching bolts through the cover and slip the gasket over the bolts. And when cover absolutely clean and free of oil film, to use a tenacious gasket compound on reassembly. Fit the cover to the cylinder block and do up the bolts finger tight. Align the cover so that the crankshaft hub is perfectly central in it. Carefully center the cover using special tool to ensure that the distance between the cover and the hub is the same all the way around. Tightening the bolts, alternating from side to side. Check after tightening that the centering tool can be easily rotated without jamming. Recheck this after fully tightening the fixing bolts. Lubricate the seal lips with fresh engine oil before fitting. It is not necessary to do this, but I wanted to additionally coat the oil seal with a sealant. Push the seal ring into the position with the centering sleeve. The remnants of the sealant must be removed. Fit the pulley in its place and screw it with the central bolt. I cannot say for sure what tightening for a metric thread, but I use tightening force of 70 newton meters. The fitting procedures are simply the reverse of dismantling. Fit the other parts and tension the fan belt. Do not forget that we need to fill the radiator with fresh coolant. Thanks for your attention.